Hello and welcome, David Judge here, and in this short video, I'm going to cover off for you the basics that every website should have. Okay, so now I'm talking from a user experience perspective and the basics a website should have to make it easy for visitors to find out your products and services and what they should do if they want to deal with you. Now, over the last couple of years, let's, let's say the last decade, technology has evolved and the way that people look at websites has changed. And 10 years ago, we had two different mediums to view a website, a desktop and a laptop. So nowadays we have four, we have four. We have desktop, laptop, mobile, and tablet. And the way people review and react to content has changed. Now, what is interesting is amongst all this change, the seven elements I'm going to share with you today have stayed the same and in so many ways, it is more important today than ever to follow these seven elements due to the level of choice people have at their fingertips. Now, in a few short words, if you wanna stand out from the crowd, what I'm going to cover with you is like a checklist of exactly how you can do that. Now, before I jump onto these seven different elements, I want to talk about this concept called above the fold and below the fold. Now, in a nutshell, above the fold is what visitors, so when visitors come through and what they do before they scroll down with their mouse or before they use their finger, it's everything that's available, that information. And then below the fold is once they actually physically scroll down. Okay, make sense? Above the fold, below the fold? Okay, great. Let's move on. Okay, so let's get into element number one, which is keep it simple. Now, what does this actually mean? And let me ask you, if a stranger were to visit your website for the first time, would they understand what you did? Would they understand what you offer, your products and services? Would they feel like they're in the right place? Because I tell you, I see so many websites every single day that literally have flashing text, tons of images, total information overload above the folds. Yes, above the fold. So the thing is, is you actually have to consider your visitors and make it as easy as possible for them to find the information you know that they can use to expand on or to understand how to deal with you rather than bombarding them with information overload because what this does is it makes it too hard to see whether your information the information they want to find out about you and they simply leave you scare them away now one other point here is remember scrolling is your friend and you can actually lay out space of you can lay out the space or additional information below the fold now this is stuff like testimonials expanding on ideas charities and support latest news awards you've won the list goes on yeah, important stuff. Okay, element number two, let them know what to do next. <laughs> now, another question, if I visit your website and I look at your products or services page or a blog post on any page of your site, if a visitor wanted to take some sort of action, would they know what to do next? Is this clearly laid out? Now, one example here is a main way a person should get into contact with you should be in the top header of your website, Is it like if they wanna call you. Another example within the body content of one of your services or products page, if a person wants to take action, is it clearly laid out what to do next? Now this little detail is a difference between a person using your product or service because it feels right in comparison to going and using somebody else's service. Okay, so it doesn't have to be like, you know, picking up the phone for them to call you. You don't have to necessarily have your phone number. It can be it can be then for them to fill out a form for you to email you to subscribe. It can be to call. It is whatever it is, but make sure that that next step that the person should actually be taking if you want them to deal with you, make sure that it's really clear and really concise. Okay, number three, explain the benefits of using your product and service. Now imagine for a moment, I have two websites where I'm trying to decide to buy a digital camera from. The first shop has a Canon 5D Mark III, yes, it's a nice camera, and it says it takes photos at 22.3 megapixels, 61 point autofocus, six frames per second continuous shooting. Okay, well that's great. If I don't actually know what those mean, what will I do? I'm gonna Google it and I'm gonna find other sites that will actually tell me the information. So let's look at this then, if you look at a second site and the same camera, except, and they have the same features, but this time they explain the benefits. And they say that it's 22.3 megapixels, meaning you can print photos up to A1 in size and you can still capture crystal clear quality as a 61 point autofocus, meaning you always maintain clear and, clear and crisp images, even in the highest level of movement with the right lighting. And it also has six frames per second, so you'll always capture every important moment. Get the drift? I mean, this might not be your bag, so you know you might think, oh, I don't really care. But if you are looking for that particular product or service, make sure you're selling that with benefits. And again, you'll stand out from the crowd. Mm, remember that, standing out from the crowd point? Okay, number four, 
keep adding content that expands on your products or services. Now this is all about supporting content again that informs and helps your visitors to make a more informed decision and also assist them with the site assist with the site search engine visibility. Now I actually covered this off in a previous video titled creating content and supporting content so make sure you check that out for more information. Number five, always consider what you can do to add value to your visitors. Now this is all about that little bit extra that you can give your visitors to entice them to, to use your product or service. Now what's really funny is I, when I mention this point, I generally have people say, well, I don't want to have to discount or give something away. And it's actually, you know what, it's totally not what it's about. What it's about is it's about things like sharing reviews on your products, recording videos that show your products in use, educating people a little more on your industry or service by creating content and more. You want to always think about what you can give people so that when they're thinking about using your product or service, that will actually entice them to get in contact with you, yeah? Okay, there's a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk or Gary V, and there's a book called Jab, 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 Right Hook, <laughs> and I want you to check this out because it's an important message. And you know what that message is? That message is ultimately, give and ye shall receive. Okay, move on, moving on, second last point. Look at what your visitors are doing. Now you can use a little tool called Google Analytics and it actually shows you the number of visitors, the pages they're visiting, how long they're staying and all sorts of critical user information that can help you to improve your user experience. Now this specific information was never available for you when you would advertise offline, so jump onto it because it's going to help you to tailor your client's experience. Okay, last one, and it's a doozy. <laughs> Deliver the content based on the device they use. Like I said beforehand, there are all sorts of ways that people are using to look at your website and you want to make sure that it's easy as possible for them to see that content based on their device. Now, this is actually commonly referred to as responsive design, so write that down, responsive design, and it simply means the layout and design of your website change to make it as easy as possible for a person to view it if they're using it on a desktop computer, or a, a, um, a notepad, or a, a notebook, or a tablet, sorry, or a phone. <laughs> You want to make it as easy as possible for them to, to view it on every single device. Now, if you have not yet jumped onto a mobile version of your website or responsive design, now's the time because I'm telling you your competitors are doing it and it's going to make it easy for people to read and navigate through your website. Okay, that's it. Seven solid elements to a website that rocks. And I tell you, if you use all these seven elements as a foundation for your website, then you're on the way to future-proofing your online presence and standing out from your competitors, yeah? Great, okay, now, in the next video, we're going to discuss how social should I be with my business? And we're going to delve into social media and if it's all worth it, especially as, you know what, the thing can be like a massive time suck. I'd love to see you on this next video as it's an interesting subject with mixed opinions. If you have a question that you would like me to answer, make sure you get in contact with me and I'd love to hear from you. Okay, great, that's it. As always, this is David Judge talking online marketing and showing you how you can grow your business online.